I'm Skip Hobsmith from Critical Blue, and I'm here to talk to you today about PRISM, a tool that helps users migrate from sequential code over to parallel and running on multi-core. A lot of end users have existing sequential legacy code that they'd like to move over, and PRISM helps them to analyze and make good decisions about how to port their code over to multi-core. PRISM uses a what-if flow. It's a five-step process, starting with initially tracing your code and analyzing it on existing software, on existing hardware. Um, you run it in and learn the characteristics of the code. Once you have that written into PRISM, then you go through an exploration phase where you can ask, what if questions about the code? What if I was to paralyze this? What if I was to remove these dependencies? What's the expected benefit that I would get from that? You use that iteratively to develop a strategy to uh, implement to run your code in parallel. The user would go off and implement that strategy, then read back into PRISM, and running in verification mode, PRISM would check to make sure that synchronization was properly handled. You can repeat this sequence of activities any number of times you want to increase the parallelism in your code. So we're going to use today uh, a quick uh, JPEG example. This is a JPEG encoder. Um, the initial tracing can be run either on a simulator or using real hardware or on a virtual machine. Um, so we'll switch now to the actual PRISM tool. Um, and this is the PRISM display. PRISM is running inside the Eclipse open source IDE. Um, and we're seeing after we've done the tracing, some initial profiling is shown here. And we're going to focus right in on the macro block encoder. It's a good thing to analyze for parallelism because it's called multiple times and it uses almost all the execution time. Um, this is the actual loop we're looking in here. We create a macro block and then we run through and encode each one of the macro blocks. So let's um, ask a question. What if we were to parallelize the macro block encode function? We'd zoom in and click this area here and go ahead and update in PRISM, and this is the resulting screen that we would see. Um, and so let me zoom back here. Um, so here we're looking, we've asked it to parallelize on four multi-cores. Unfortunately, what we found is, although it's being scheduled across multiple cores, um, everything is still running sequentially. Um, and we'd like to know what's causing that. If we switch to a threading view and we zoom in, we can see that there's a dependency relationship here between each one of the macro blocks. And if we right click on this, it brings us up in here and we see that the source and destination of the dependencies are all around this macro block function. And we realize that a typical sequential programmer would create one macro block data structure and reuse it in the loops. And that's exactly what's preventing the parallelism here. So the user would go ahead and fix that by moving the macro block inside the loop so it's created each iteration. Um, when he does that, he would then read it back into PRISM to check to make sure that things are working well. And unfortunately, when we load it back in, what we see, these red lines here, are race conditions, improper synchronizations. Um, some are going forward, which is OK, running on four cores. Some are going backwards, which is a fatal error. And if we right click on these, again, it will bring us up into the code. And we see that we're in the Huffman encoder this time. And what's happening is that although the macro blocks are all running in parallel, they need to run in a strict order when we're doing the final Huffman encoding. So the solution would be to pull the Huffman out of the parallelism in this case. Um, and when we do that and read it back into PRISM, this is the result that we get. So here we see, in this case, eight cores showing good scalability. We can see what this would look like if we were to drop it down to fewer cores, four cores in this case. Let's just go ahead and look at that. And we see good utilization of these cores. So by parallelizing the macro block function here and pulling out the Huffman, we've created a JPEG encoder, which is good, scalable, and uses all the available multi-cores that it can find. So just to wrap up, um, PRISM is available through the Critical Blue website if you'd like to evaluate it. It's free for evaluation for 30 days. Just head to www.criticalblue.com.